Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know by now I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Well today we're looking at a camera that I purchased some time ago, a couple of years ago, and I use it quite often. And actually for photographing animals it's my favourite camera by far. And what we're going to look at is a long term review or medium to long term review of the Panasonic G9. And here it is fantastic camera. Now it's micro four thirds, has a 20 megapixel uh, micro four thirds sensor in it. So it isn't a large full frame sensor or even APS-C sensor, but quite honestly, you're still gonna get stunning images. I'll show you some of the images on my computer in just a little bit. Um, but that's basically the camera. I think vast majority of my audience will be well aware of a G9. Um, it is one of Panasonic's um, most popular cameras. It's more, for me anyway, more of a photographic camera than it is a video camera. But if you're looking at buying a camera that can do both exceptionally well, then the G9 is definitely, should be up there on your sort of, you know, uh, consideration list. I, I really do believe that. Um, I think that, uh, you know, Micro Four Thirds has a, has a really good future. It is great with stills, even with a 20 megapixel sensor. It's, it's so good. And I'll show you that. I'll also put on my Flickr page uh, some pictures I've actually selected um, where you can have a look at what I think of a G9 using a variety of lenses. Um, at the moment, I've got fitted to it with Panasonic 35 to 100. I've used the Olympus 15 to 150. It's a cheap lens, but it works so well. Um, I've used regularly the 12 to 35. The Panasonic f2.8 12 to 35, which actually is the sister lens to this one, because this is a constant f2.8 aperture on, on this lens. And what's nice about this lens when you're focusing, uh, zooming, sorry, it's internal zooming. It doesn't, you know, the barrel doesn't move. So, you know, that's really, really good. Now, the only thing I would say about the G9, it is quite a big camera for micro four thirds. I'll put the, the body weight in the description below. So. You're not, you know, you're not going to get a really compact body with a G9, but it's got tremendous features. I'm going to go through some of the features and why I love this camera. And there's a few in particular which really draws me to want to pick up the G9 when I go out taking photographs. Now, it's got your, your standard PASM dial on the top. Most cameras do have that with a, and you can lock it. Uh, nothing fancy there. Um, it's got a display screen on the top here and you can actually light it up, flick the switch and it comes on, lights up. Uh, that has uses if you're photographing, you know, down low or doing video down low, you can see the display um, rather than having to uh, guess what the actual settings are. Um, standard, you've got twin controls, you've got control on the top, control on the back. Um, I've actually got mine set up for this uh, front dial I've got set up for aperture or shutter priority. So if I'm in aperture mode, turn that and that'll adjust the aperture. Likewise in shutter priority, that'll adjust the shutter speed. Because I've got this back dial here set up uh, purely for um, exposure compensation. So you can turn that and the exposure will go down or the compensation will go up. I just find it really quick and easy, if I, particularly if I've got the camera to me view, you know, to me eye, my viewfinder, got the viewfinder to me eye, I can quickly adjust uh, the exposure, you know, on the fly. And that's, that's really, really handy. Touch screen, touch to focus. Um, I do find though with this particular model, that when I've got it up to me eye, I like to have, which I've got it set on my Sony's, on my Olympus, and actually on the GH5 Mark II, and it works really well on the GH5 Mark II, where I can move my thumb across the screen and move my focus point. But for some bizarre reason, my nose affects the, the screen and it won't move. But it doesn't do that on the GH5 Mark II, which is bizarre. Uh, but it has got, which is really good, your joystick, and that's just as quick your joystick here to uh, move your focus point around. Um, now, to be honest, you don't have to do that too often because the autofocus algorithm in the G9 is great. And that's why I love using it. So we've got a really good algorithm, particularly for animal detect, animal eye detect and body detect and face detect. And I found this to be the most accurate camera I've ever used for photographing um, birds, me cats particularly, and wildlife. I find the Keeper 8 from the G9 is certainly better than it is with the GH5 Mark II. 
I'm not quite sure why that is. I guess it's because Panasonic have made the G9 to be more of a, you know, a photographer's camera rather than a video camera. But I'm going to go into its video specs a little bit in a minute. Um, so, yeah, the AF algorithm on the G9 is great. Again, I will go through a few uh, pickies I've taken uh, on, i go through them on the computer. Um, it's got many other features. It's got lots of pro features. Uh, for example, it's got two UHS-2 card slots. So they're both UHS-2. Uh, so you've got redundancy built in. And that's what a pro really needs, particularly if you're doing, you know, uh, event photography, wedding photography, anything like that. You really don't want to take a risk of using a camera that has only got the one SD card slot, um, uh, such as my Sony A7Cs. If I took that out to do anything, you know, professionally, I do run the risk that the card might be corrupt and I wouldn't do that. So I wouldn't use, no matter how good the A7C is, I wouldn't use that camera um, for that uh, one reason. But for here in the studio, doing these videos, they're fantastic cameras and I'm so chuffed that I bought them. And I'm using them now. So I'm doing the wide shot you see here is on one of my A7Cs and the close-up shot is on my other A7C. The close-up shot's got the Sony 85mm lens, the wide shot there has got the Sony 35mm lens, and I'm getting an even wider generic shot over there with my Sony A7R Mark III. That's for high resolution camera, pro camera, two SD card slots, etc. Um, and that's got the Tamron 20mm lens fitted to it, but I believe I've got it in APS-C mode, crop sensor mode over there. So that's getting so that's those three shots over there. Then my trusty little ZV-1, which I love to bits, is just getting, you know, the close-up shots of the uh, product. Um, now, uh, getting back to the G9, it's got the two SD card slots on the side here. Again, you've got redundancy built in, so you don't have to worry about backups. Um, and they're both fast uh, card slots because uh, the burst rate on the G9 is phenomenal, particularly if you're doing wildlife. Uh, so um, that's one of the reasons I love the G9 is its burst rate, uh, two SD card slots. But as I say, there's two specific reasons that I love the G9. One is the grip. Well, three actually then. The grip is one of the best I've ever used. It's great. It's kind of similar to the grip on my Fuji X-S10, although my X-S10 is my travel camera. This is what I use if I want to go out and about traveling because it's so light. Um, it's much smaller than the, uh, oddly enough, it's a bigger sensor in the X10, SX10, um, and that's it there. The Fuji XSN's got a bigger sensor, uh, but a much smaller body, which is bizarre. But that's got a really nice grip, although it's quite a small grip. You see my finger falls underneath it like that, which it doesn't on the uh, G9. Um, and it's certainly a better grip than what's on the new GH5 Mark II. The GH5 Mark II is very much a big camera. That's a chunky, chunky, oh, I've got to sit further back. That's a real chunky piece of kit. Um, but the grip on the G9 is lovely. You can walk around all day long and not feel fatigued with that, even though it is a heavier camera than the XS10. Uh, SX10, XS10, XS10, that's it. Um, so, you know, great handling on the G9. So that's one uh, thing with a G9 with a bigger lenses or smaller lenses. Um, that's one of the advantages with Micro Four Thirds. The body itself may not be uh, any smaller. In fact, it's bigger than some of its uh, competitors, certainly in the APS-C range, but the lenses are so compact. I mean, that's an F2.8 lens. Uh, 30, that's 35 to 100. That's basically 70 to 200. So in full frame terms, F28 constant, F28. Now, if I purchased a 70 to 200 F28 G Master lens for the Sonys, it would be twice the weight at least, um, and at least three times the price. I mean, it's around about 1,500 quid, something like that. Well, I picked this up used for less than 400 quid. And the optics are superb. They're really, really good. So, you know, um, and also all the other lenses are a lot more compact than, uh, you know, uh, it is on full frame or APS-C. And the image stabilization in the G9 is excellent, as it is in most of it, to be fair, in most of the Micro Four Thirds bodies. That's one of the big selling points of Micro Four Thirds is the uh, five axis in body image stabilization, both for steels and for video. So when you're using long lenses, you don't need a tripod. You really don't need a tripod. Either long lenses are compact. But the viewfinder is my biggest thing um, with this camera. It is 
awesome. It is just like looking through a viewfinder of an expensive full frame camera. It's really, really good. And you can adjust the size of a viewfinder. There's a little button on the side here. Um, I don't know how, how easy that is to see, but there's a little button just on the side. It's, oh, there we go, that's better. There's a little button just on the side here. Push that in and that will adjust the viewfinder. So if you're a spectacle wearer, you can make that viewfinder image a bit smaller within the viewfinder so you can see the whole frame. I have it larger, but um, it is a beautifully bright viewfinder and large, big, large, bright viewfinder. I'll put the resolution in the video so you can so you know you'll be, be able to see what the resolution of this viewfinder is but a big point for me with this camera is its viewfinder that's one of the things i love using it for um, it's got the traditional three inch articulating screen uh, these are all things i've gone through on, on my previous reviews and other people have done but um, it is your standard uh, three inch you know articulating screen great for video bit of a pain in the butt really for taking stills because if you're doing you know low down shots I just like to flip it up like I do on my a7r mark III uh, but having to rotate it out then you've got to turn it up I always worry I'm going to knock it do you know what I mean um, brilliant for video like for example with two a7c's I've got the articulating screen and it's great you just flip them out so you can see you know what you're filming on the a7r mark III I've done a pre-roll, a pre-test, just to check that the framing is okay, but I can't actually see that it is filming, and it hasn't even got a tally light, so I don't even know if it is running. hope it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, three-inch articulating screen, touchscreen, all the usual sort of malarkey you find on virtually all modern-day cameras. Um, uh, but, as I say, the grip is excellent. Now, with regards to uh, video, now, this does compete very very well with the lights of a gh5 and the gh5 mark ii it's got internal 10-bit recording um many codecs uh it really is a, and you can upgrade it to vlog you're gonna get a vlog upgrade for it um i haven't done that and it's got lots of other picture profiles so uh, you know if you are on a budget and you're only buying one camera the g9 will do it the video quality is outstanding it's a great and uh, and uh, I'm really going on like a rocket here because you know, I'm really excited about it. But the new firmware, version 2.4 .4 firmware, is great because the autofocus is working so much better for video than it previously was. And I've done a test, if you look at this clip, I've done a test very, very recently, in the last couple of weeks, showing, I actually was, I don't know what I was reviewing, something or other, um, and the autofocus really held. It's, you know, it's really, really good. And you look at this clip, and it is, but it's not pulsing. It's holding it really, really well. So I'm chuffed to bits with what Panasonic are starting to do. But I still wish they would introduce, as well as a contrast detect autofocus, which this is, they call it depth from defocus. It's effectively a posh word for contrast detect autofocus. I really do wish they would introduce a phase detect autofocus points on the sensor. Uh, then they really would be competing head to head with the likes of Sony and Canon. Uh, to some extent Fuji, but certainly Sony and Canon. Um, I mean, this camera has more video features and codecs within it than what the A7C could ever have, you know. So it is a better video camera to, to certain extents, but I use the A7Cs all the time, well, 99% of the time, um, unless I'm using the camera as part of my review, but I use the A7C because the autofocus is spot on. Although saying that, I have got a big picture of a cat in the background, so I do hope I've got it set to human uh, detect and not animal detect. <laughs> That'd be funny if I've got it set wrong, wouldn't it? Um, and so, yeah, it's, you know, the G9 is a very capable video camera. Do bear in mind, though, it's got a 30-minute video record limit on it. So if you're like me, I tend to waffle on and on. It's great with the A7Cs because I don't have to worry about a particular record limit because I can cut that in the edit. Uh, so I, could, I don't have to keep stopping and starting. Um, with a G9, you just have to be conscious of that 30 minute video record limit. Um, but there we go, yeah, that's the uh, G9. Now, photographs, let's have a quick look at some photographs. I'm not gonna bore you to tears with them. I do suggest, but as well as obviously looking at it on this video, is go into my Flickr page. There'll be a link in the description. That'll be a lot better. You'll be able to see the actual resolution of the photographs, you know, uh, on Flickr much better than you can on YouTube. 
But um, talking about animal detect, let's bring up a grid view. Ooh. Right, so these are just a few uh, pictures that I've uh, picked out. Now, these early ones here were with, were, were with the early uh, firmware. They weren't with a version 2.4 firmware and they're still great. They're still really, really nice images. Um, and, you know, it picks out the, the bird beautifully. And look at the eyes and, the, and you know, its beak, everything is um, spot on, spot on. You know, um, we go through any of these. And this is the early firmware, you know, lovely sharp, sharp images. Really, really pleased with. Now, it, it's great because when you're walking around, uh, whether you be, you know, I don't know, on safari or whether you're just photographing your own cats and dogs, they move really quick. You don't want to be mucking around with moving the focus point to get the, because you can do it that way, obviously with any camera, but it takes time and by that time, the animal's gone. You know, they've flown away, the cats run off, whatever, you know, whatever. Um, but the nice thing with the G9 and with the GH5 Mark II is, I mean, you know, beautifully sharp. Look at that. Gorgeous. And so that's early firmware and a relatively cheap lens. That was the Panasonic 100 to 300. That is not an expensive lens. That's basically a 200 to 600. You know, um, it's a very cost effective lens. So we're looking at lenses that aren't expensive uh, with these, these, these images anyway. You know, as I take a look at them on Flickr, you'll see that. Uh, They're ideal. Little Sammy. I mean, look at his eyes. Perfect. These were taken with the new firmware, the new 2.4, 2, two, I can't never say it, the 2.4 firmware, uh, which has added not just eye, well, it's added, it's got eye detect, animal eye detect, obviously, as well as human, but. Uh, um, face detect and then body detect. So it's got three ways of detecting the animal. So if it can't see the eye, it'll pick out the face. And if it can't see the face clearly, it'll pick out the body. And it works, it just simply works. Uh, not 100% of the time, but 90% of the time, maybe maybe 95%, the keeper rate is really good. And that's why I like using the G9. Um, because I know I can go out, particularly if I'm photographing animals, um, I will always take the G9 because I just damn well know that I'm going to get a much higher keeper rate. See, look, the eyes are gorgeous, aren't they? You know, I'm going to get a much higher keeper rate than I would um, if I was using, say, me Fuji. I could do it with me Fuji, but as I said earlier, I have to. I would have to move the spot, you know, the, the square across to the eye. Um, and... Uh, you don't want to be doing that if you're photographing animals that are likely to move quickly. It's also great for other subjects. I mean, you know, um, now with this, I, I probably did move the little, the little square over to where I wanted it to focus. But it's quick and easy to do. Again, Molly's eye. Look, spot on. And it shoots, you know, it's, it hasn't focused on the glass in the foreground. It has focused on little Sammy's eye. I am gorgeous, isn't it? You know, even there. So you can see the images are really good, not just for, you know, humans and for animals. If you look at, you know, just these sort of pictures uh, I was showing you earlier, you know, they're, they're really good. Look at that leaf and that flower and the colours, the depth. There is nothing wrong with Micro Four Thirds. There really isn't. I use all three formats. I use Micro Four Thirds, I use APS-C and I use Full Frame. Uh, full Frame obviously has its advantages, so does APS-C. Um, but then Micro Four Thirds has its advantages. And in this video, I'm not going to go into which is better for what. You know, that uh, depends on uh, so many different factors. Um, and, you know, and what you're photographing. Um, the out of focus area, the bokeh, if you get the right lens, uh, set to the right aperture, like these were shot at f2.8, um, you're still getting a nice creamy bokeh. Uh, so, you know, 
And even there, look, background, well, you can't even see what the background is, but look at his eye. That is so sharp. And all of these, look at the shading, the colours, the contrast. That berry, is it? Whatever it is, beautifully sharp. But this sensor produces really lovely crisp, oh, crisp colours, um, definition. I mean, even from quite a, well, that was a distance. I'm shoot right in at uh, 100 mil, which is basically 200 mil on this shot. Uh, from across the garden and um, although to be fair the animal detect I detect there's no way it was going to work from that distance so I just put the little square um, over his eye picked it up beautifully that is so sharp even through all this uh, foliage and whatever so you know great camera great results. It is a great camera at a great price with lots of features. Uh, the software I'm actually using for editing, I use two, uh, well I use three actually, but uh, two in particular I'd like to you know, very quickly, and it is going to be quick, talk about as Capture One Pro. Great bit of software, quite expensive, but it is really, really good at what it does. Very similar to Lightroom. You've got your catalogs, you can store your images in. You've got uh, editing features, everything you could conceivably think of for editing. Um, I just love using it. Um, it's fast, it's reliable, it doesn't crash. Really, really good bit of software. Um, and uh, I've got an offer on at the moment for my viewers, but download the trial version to play with. First of all, that's the first thing to do. And if you do decide uh, you like it, Put the code in of AVP10 when you check out, AVP10, and you'll get 10% off your purchase price when you either subscribe or you buy it. They have two models, a subscription model or an outright purchase model. So um, great bit of software um, and a great alternative to Lightroom. So uh, uh, have a look in the description below for the link to the trial version. And I say, if you do decide to buy it, AVP10. The other uh, bit of software that I always recommend and I recommend this one um, equally as much and sometimes more than I recommend uh, Capture One because it's amazing value for money. It's about 60, 70 quid um, and the price does fluctuate depending on uh, the time of year. But again, if you don't, uh, there'll be a link to download the trial version. And again, if you do decide to buy it, use the code AVP, AVP to get $10 off. Um, and I highly recommend this bit of software. Again, you've got your catalogue, um, You've got all your editing features that you would ever ever need. Uh, works very similar to Capture One, to be honest. Uh, but this one, you can do uh, quite a bit of... Uh, we can do things like adding new skies. There isn't any sky here to add, but it's got, uh, you know, features to be able to add, add new sky, um, all sorts of other features. Uh, I recommend you just download the trial version. As I say, there'll be a link below. Have a play with both of them. It doesn't cost anything, so you might as well have a little play. Um, but if you're looking for a bit of software that's an exceptional value for money and can do virtually everything all the others can do, uh, then I can highly recommend uh, Luminar 4 or AI. Uh, it's now called AI2. They're both great bits of software and they both, if you use the code AVP, you get $10 off. So there we go. That's the, the plug for the software. Um, hope you enjoy my channel. I hope you enjoy this uh, short video about the Panasonic G9 and why I love using it. And I say, just to recap, two, three things, the grip and the handling is great. Walk around all day long with it, which is great. Uh, the viewfinder is great for my eyes because of eye relief. It's fantastic, beautiful, it's large, it's brilliant. Um, and if you're photographing animals, probably the best camera out there because the animal IAF is phenomenal. So there we go. Um, that's my thoughts on the Panasonic G9. Hope you found that useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Actually, I had one person comment, but uh, he's, he's desubscribed from me. Is that such a phrase, desubscribe? I keep plugging about subscribing. Well, I need to because it helps me grow the channel. Nobody's paying me to do all this. I fund it all myself. So, um, you know, I need to get as many subscriptions as I can and viewers. So apologies if you're fed up with me pushing it. I've got to. So there we go. Um, so thanks, for, uh, thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed the channel. And if you do want to help uh, support the channel, uh, treat me to a coffee. There'll be a link in the description below. Um, so that'd be great. Thanks very much indeed. 
and uh, stay tuned for more videos relating to video and photography uh, and audio. Cheers for now. Bye.